Hey, what's up? It's Fan Fantasy, and we're back with part two of our interview with Bundesfaust, who is a M1A2 SEP gunner in the US Army. In the second part of our interview, we're going to be talking about simulations and how they relate to the real world, and also your favorite video games like Gunner Heat PC, Steel Beast Pro, and a bit of Aces and Armor. We also talk about what these video games do best, and also the downside of some of the games. You can watch part one in the description below. And if you find this video helpful, make sure to hit that like, comment on your feedback, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the interview. How often do you use simulation in your training and how do they translate well into the real world training? Uh, pretty often. I, actually, a lot more often than we do um, training on the actual tanks. And um, you guys use VBS, right? Mm, yes. I remember. Yes. Yeah. We yeah, so VBS is kind of like the the basis for all these different simulators. There's yeah. like, I think there's like one or two others that we use for just like specific things, but generally it's it's all like based on VBS. Uh, so things like your AGTS, which is your um, advanced gunnery training simulator, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> which is that that's just like your you have your your gunner and tank commander um, in a you know in a mock up you know TC and gunner station. Um, you know, with full function, you know, switchology and everything. And then you have an IO, which is just, you know, the person that's actually controlling the scenario mm. um, and, you know, you know, doing things like, uh, you know, giving like a, like a, threat, a threat brief or, you know, whatever. Um, pretty much man the if, if you play like like Armist 3, like it's almost like Armist 3 Zeus, but it's, you know, you just have this linear uh engagement that you can run you have a, you have a bunch of different like scenarios you can run but mm -hmm. um it's just that one thing you can't really change things on the fly like you can in like vbs uh, okay like the base you know um but um i think they they honestly translate over pretty well um i think one of the key things to do is just know what will transfer over and what won't because there's certain habits that uh are good that you can build from them like mm -hmm. certain communication um land navigation man uh team management um like all sorts of stuff i could i could keep listing stuff off for like another hour probably but <laughs> um there's also bad habits where uh you just don't have the the, the feel of actually uh being in a vehicle mm -hmm. um the actual like doing maintenance on your vehicle like you don't have to do that in vbs3 you just go you know um you don't really have things like uh like faults or malfunctions or damaged components that inhibit you know the you know full mission capability of your vehicle you know you're not really forced to operate in a degraded environment so mm -hmm. it's but just knowing they... what you can hmm? sorry but can they make certain situations where your tank is for example you're in emergency mode like can you shoot in that way or like simulate that in 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 those i believe so it depends on um so in just playing like vbs3 uh which you can like I, i've used before for like you know doing tank platoon stuff actually it feels a lot like you're doing steel beasts mm. um you know but it's like it feels like arma 2 yeah um but uh like cctt which is your close combat tactical trainer that's like your full up like you have a you have an independent driver loader gunner and tc um <clears throat> in there in in each uh you have like a little simulator like it's almost like a pod um type thing where you have those just like the crew stations in there mm -hmm. and then each one of those is you know each tank in uh cctt which is a close combat tactical training, you have your actual, like, uh, your full, you know, all four crew stations, your driver, loader, gunner, and tank commander with mm -hmm. all the switchology in there. Um, you know, minus the actual loading shells, you just hit buttons. Um, but what's, um, what's good about that is those actually do simulate the different uh, fire control system modes mm -hmm. as well as, like, if you take a, a hit to, like, your um your gun or I, I forget how it's actually coded in there but if you take a hit to like I don't know, for example like your gun or something or your turret it'll put you it'll actually throw you into emergency and you have to actually like just like a steel beast you have to switch over you know mm, 
to emergency and then you can traverse against it. It works the same way. Um, so things like that, um, I really appreciate. And I think they actually build really good habits um, yeah. and help with system management. Yeah, because um, you're not going to, I don't know, get hit in, in the real world and then learn that, right? You're, you're going to learn it in an environment where it's safe and where you can, I guess you can crawl, <laughs> walk, and run it with it right so yes yeah, yeah. exactly and also yeah. an environment where uh where if you know somebody or just you know the, the platoon just drops the ball nobody dies yeah you know everyone can just you know get a slap on the wrist and say like hey y'all suck you need to get it together and you know blah 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 and then you know you can actually improve like that and then that way mm -hmm. when you actually take it to the actual tanks you know when you get a like ntc or whatever you're that much better because you've you know dealt with just chaos now it's like, okay, now I just have to get used to, the, like, this is a real tank now. Now we have to do maintenance. Now we have to do all these other adjacent yeah. things. Because, but because I've honed in the system management and these other, um, you know, uh, skills that have been isolated in the, that simulated environment, now, I, I'm, now that I'm good at that, I can focus on all the surrounding responsibility and everything. Um, and I think, like, depending on the person, you know, to a, a good extent, um is a good i think is very effective um obviously there's there's always room for improvement in the simulation yeah you know uh category but what we have now um i think does a pretty decent job of you know accomplishing what it's meant to accomplish which is you know a simulation not yes. actuality yeah on a side question about that you know vr is a big upcoming technology right and uh do you see VR being implemented into these trainings, or do you think the what you guys already have is enough for training? I think what we have is is uh, I wouldn't say enough, but it's it does you know it does a good job. Um, but it's funny that you mentioned VR because there actually is a VR uh, gunnery training mm. um, app that you can actually download right now if you look up Sabo X on Ooh. the App Store. If you have an iPhone, if you have a Samsung, then uh, I don't know. Good luck. But oh. uh, if, if you have an iPhone, you can go on the App Store, the Apple App Store, and look up Sabo X. And it's not, honestly, I would take Steel Beast over it, but <laughs> for something that's mobile and um, for specifically like uh, training for gunnery, actually is pretty good. Um, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually messing around with it last night. Okay. Uh, with 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 a with a friend of mine, uh, we're just like <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, but you can actually, it's it's multi crew. You can actually have uh four devices. Your well, if you're using, it's both Bradley and M one A two. Okay. So if you're using M one A two, you're gonna have your gunner loader and TC, and then your IO controls. Like if you're in a defensive engagement, you know he controls the driver moving up and then you know moving back down or on the offense, you know starting and stopping. Mm. Um. And then, of course, he'll actually issue the the threat brief and what the scenario is, things like that. Um, but yeah, no, for sure, like, the Army's always, you know, looking for, like, new ways to actually, like, um, not only enhance, like, you know, what training um, programs we have, but also, like, looking at different avenues uh, to actually accomplish that. Ease of access to, like, the, like the average soldier can you know pick up like every soldier is going to have a phone so you know now there's actually no excuse you know not not to train and actually learn something about you know yeah your job um uh you know especially like you know before gunnery um you know that helps a lot I, what's actually cool about it they actually have um it uses uh ai to actually like um so you actually have to say like the correct fire commands and everything, okay. and it like listens to like what you're doing and everything. Um, you know, like like when you're actually engagement, so you have to actually do it like you know by the book correct. And it'll wow. actually show you a timeline, um, like like you would on an actual gunnery range. You have it's it's like a long, it's a linear timetable, and it has things like your, <clears throat> like for example, if you're in the defilade, like in a defensive uh, engagement, mm -hmm. you have you know, you have like one target, um, you know, which is a truck, and it has each timestamp for okay, um, 
target locked at this at this time. The gunner saw that you know identified the target at this time. Um, driver moved up here. Uh, fire adjust was given here. Target was achieved here. Driver went back down here. You know, time stamps for everything, and that's what mm. that's where you're actually graded on in, in a real gunnery is is um, your reaction and timing, right? Yes. <clears throat> Um, wow. And then that comes out with a total score. And then also, you know, th or things like exposure time. That's one thing that, you know, yes. they, they harp on too, is like not being exposed for too long, which is, you know, that's very important, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, you yeah. know, come up, shoot, go away. <laughs> yeah. Did you say AI was part of that training too? Uh, yeah, it, it does. They just use uh, AI. I'm pretty sure it's just to um, better understand what you're actually saying as mm. opposed to just using a microphone and using traditional text-to-speech ah, okay. uh, i think it does a better job at it or something um but it's just yeah. so you actually are saying like the the correct fire commands and you know every, like your gunner and loader are giving the correct responses and stuff yeah and we'll get into that in a bit <laughs> oh yeah so yeah uh a fun question is you know what is your favorite tank game so far and no judgment here if you say something else or different, completely different. Um, I like the uh, if you go on cool math games and look up the no, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I thought you could say War Thunder for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that, I mean, that, that's they, cool that too. Game, they, they, that game is painful. Um, I, honestly, like I have to say, Seal Beast. It's just like mm. I get, I get the kind of you know have a sprinkle of doing my you know my actual job but from the comfort of my home my own home and i don't have to be rained on and sweaty inside a turret you know i can just you know crack open a coke or, or a beer or something and you know tank yeah. on um but yeah I, I, I honestly probably steal beast nice yeah it's great because not every uh, tanker loves to bring the job back at home but it's it's nice to hear that you you know you're willing to play your job even if you're not working <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'm um, um, i think that's like a german thing or something you come home from work to go back to work yeah <laughs> something like uh, that. great so how has your experience as a 19 kilo influence your perspective on military games and simulation i think uh for the most part is just kind of seeing um i mean I, I'll, obviously you know if you know, if a if a game I play like if I play squad or or you know like the original Red Orchestra or something, like, if there's a tank, uh, of course I'm gonna want to use it. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, one thing uh, that I do find myself doing is is actually trying like real world uh, techniques mm. and trying to find um, you know e even just a little bit of training value uh, out of it. Um, uh, just certain like things that I could relate to what's actually like uh in doctrine and then like you know helping build like more or solidify you know reasoning for it as opposed to oh we just do it because it says so okay why mm. does it say so oh well you know in I don't know in uh I guess if you use like squad for example you know you're using a tank and you're you know working on the death load well you know, all of a sudden, before I knew it, there were troops like surrounding me. You know, like shooting with RPGs and stuff. Like, okay, why is that? Well, because these troops are controlled by actual players, and these people think, and they figure, oh, well, if I get on the, you know, the other side of this berm that he's on, he probably won't be able to see me, or mm. if he does, he won't be able to shoot me. You know, real thinking people do real thinking people things, yep. as opposed to, you know, maybe the troop AI in, um and steel beasts you know might not do something as aggressive or you know specific you know that way yeah um so certain things that you know you can kind of get those kind of mental reps in you know um i know i know for a fact like uh simulation wise like steel beasts uh, especially because they have like you know more or less like pretty accurate uh terrain for like um Hohenfels, Mm. Uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. Well, Fort Johnson now, uh, Louisiana. You know, GRTC, um, NTC, things like that, because they have you know pretty accurate like terrain models for those. Uh, yeah, I've actually used um, like the Hohenfels map before I went to JMRC to actually like get a, get accustomed to that kind of terrain, and it actually helped. 
Wow. Uh, GRTC, same thing. Like we're gonna working in close quarters, confined spaces, just understanding, okay, this is what it's gonna look like. This is, you know, how I should be scanning, you know, what I should be worried about. Um things like that. Like I, I did a whole class on um on uh one five oh nine, the Geronimo, the hmm. on four unit there. And basically figured out like what their, you know, typical like composition was and um, you know, what the the trend was. Just reaching out to some some buddies that have been there before, you know, what what was their typical, you know, thing that they'll you know how they're gonna attack, how they usually defend, how they, you know, conduct themselves in in a battle space. Yeah. And set up scenarios like that and um that ended up actually helping me out a lot. So I think wow. uh, certain things like that, if you can get some kind of, if you can identify something that you can get mental reps in, I would, if you're, you know, passionate about your job, like I am, I would definitely encourage um, doing that. Right. Right. Yeah. Like going back to what you said earlier about uh, squad and um, sure we have, a, we can have a different discussion about, you know, the fire control systems of that game but it's true though they are real players playing against you and so even the enemy that you're training or fighting against they're also real people too and they'll find ways to kill you mm -hmm. um and so yeah i think that's that's a really like really interesting like perspective that you bring into is like yeah real people think real tactics and how will you respond to it so a lot of my viewers are uh, Gunner Heat PC viewers, um, and they love it. I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, what are your thoughts on Gunner Heat PC and how well they implemented the Abrams fire control system? So I'm 100%, well, I, I won't say 100% now because I've been on A1 essays, but for the most part, I'm an A2 tanker. So mm -hmm. anything A2, SEP V2 or SEP V3, is, that's kind of my realm. But just uh, from the hands-on, comparing Steel Beast A1 modeling, which is, is uses the same, um, like not the same fire control system, but the same method of achieving, you know, things mm. like a ballistic solution and automatic lead and everything like that, um, as the OGM one, and then also having hands-on experience on real A1s, which you know is the same. It, is, it does the same thing as the OG M1 and uh, M1 IP. Um, I I would say yeah, they, they did a good a good job implementing it. Um, there's little quirks that you know it's still in development. I'm not gonna you know sit here and you know complain yeah. about it. But I think for the most part, uh, it looks really good. It like my my only problem is is I have to like not be close to the screen if I'm in thermals or else it looks. Like I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, the, I think it's based on the the thermals at the time, and so yeah, it's not as clear yeah. as it is today, right? Yeah, yeah, it's also meant to be looked through like a little diopter. <laughs> so if you're yeah. close to the screen, it's like, oh, this is blurry. As soon as you lean back, like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, I I think they did a pretty decent job. I think if anything, I would just say you know, it, it'd be cool to you know be required to index the uh, the different rounds as your loader loads them. Um, I think it'd just be uh, not only like cool uh, to be able to do that, but also um, give a little, at least to me, it seems like it would give more of a purpose to listen for the fire commands. So when your TC, you know, says like, hey, fire, fire, Sabo, then, you know, okay, he's going to load a Sabo next after this heat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, being able to like kind of juggle your, um, you know, your attention like that, I think would be, would be cool. I think to me that would kind of enhance, especially like the you know the um, the, <laughs> the intense voice acting yeah. in the in the game. That that part I think is is cool, but um, yeah, SDS wise, yeah, I, I I think it's it's pretty spot on. Earlier I asked about um, the military side of things, and so I want to ask more of <coughs> civilian and gamers. So can gamers learn tactics and implement them in video games like in Gunner PC, Stu Beast, and other tank games depending on the game absolutely like like it to different extents um obviously steel beast is just a straight up you know simulation so absolutely you know yeah. if you're trying to learn um you know the actual like no joke behavior of these vehicles like it is 
from my perspective, it feels like a near, um, a near one to one representation, minus like certain features that some of the vehicles have, um, mm. which you know, like you can't do an uh, an MRS update on the M1, which is boo hiss. But mm. um, you know, as far as actually like engaging targets, conducting operations you know, in various environments, things like that. Um, I think Steelbees is good for the um, the crew and bigger picture type of things. I think mm-hmm. in terms of um, you know, it also depends on your interests. But if you if you want more of a um, you know understanding, just basic uh, platoon maneuver and management, and uh, you know a little bit of fire control system, um, and um, Especially some of like the the crew internal uh, communication and stuff. Yeah. I think GHBC does a really good job of that. Yeah, um, I'm sure they're they're gonna expand more on you know on all these things. So right now, I wouldn't say is like the the pinnacle of what you know their vision might be. But yeah. I think for what it is right now, I think it's good at you know giving that kind of like a great um, introduction to to the tank world of things, right? Tanks yes. and stuff. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, agree. It's, I I would say that is like right now that I can think of for modern tanks, that is the like introductory like yep. balance between, you know, War Thunder and Steel Beast. Like it has fire control aspects. Oh, yeah. So if you want some like, you know, complicated stuff to learn, but it has the instant action kind of, you know, you know, like I want to have this horrifying engagement versus like, you know, like four T eighties and in an M sixty, you know. Yeah. Uh, kind of jump to it thing. Um yeah. I think uh I think in terms of um like the cooperation between like infantry and armor I think one of the one of the best examples I've seen are uh Squad 44 which is it's World War 2 but you get a lot of the same um you can use a lot of the same like current you know like tactical and doctrinal yep. things, uh, and kind of you know here and there, kind of apply them. Uh, that and actually the old uh, the original Red Orchestra has a mod called Darkest Hour. I don't know if you heard mm. of it. Um, yes, I, I it, have. It, it's kind of like Squad Forty Four, just old. So if you have a computer that's you know, um, it, it has a still running community too. They still yep. like update it like all the yep. time. Um, but that's another one that you can um, actually play that quite a bit, and right. you can use a lot of the same. Um, like crew management and communication, as well as like communicating with infantry. Um, you can use you can be the artillery, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. I think is uh, um, is like really good places to actually like learn and implement certain um tactical theory and stuff. Mm-hmm. And apply them and see how they work. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Emphasis, emphasis on on learn. <laughs> yep, and I guess enjoyment at the end of the day too, right? Because it is a video oh, yeah. game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, what's one thing that all games and simulations don't do well on? Mm, I'd say there's some some games do you know, get kind of close, but I think the feel. Uh oh, you know what? No, I got you. The feel and the sound. I think those are two things, especially on the simulation side. On, on the more game stuff, like gamey, um, you know, but realistic games, they do a pretty decent job. But I think for sure on the simulation side, um, and it's just kind of a simulator trope as yeah. well, but a lot of times the sound and the feel is not quite there. Um, I think in some cases, maybe like things like, I almost want to say driving, but that's that's very like different games have different like driving mechanics so it's yeah i don't know but the feel um, of being in a tank and feeling yeah. the the rocks underneath right that are that you're crunching yeah. over yeah like it feels like you're actually moving around in this giant you know however many ton box of death <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um i think that and also uh i think interior modeling is definitely like a big, mm. At least for me, I, that's the big thing that I love. But I think the having an immersive uh, interior 
Um, so not just having like, oh, well, there's the gun. It you know it moves a little bit, but like when <clears throat> like when you shoot, it recoils. There's smoke. You see the loader loading around. You see you know you can you can watch if it's a multi crew game. You can actually look back and watch your tank commander you know looking around and stuff if you really wanted to. Mm. Um, I think having you know um, more fidelity uh, in yeah. those aspects, but I I think probably probably the kind of the 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 look and sound. Um, one really good example of that being done actually really well is uh, Gunner Heat PC. Mm. Um, I think one of the okay the the okay example is Steel Beast. It can look really good, and then other cases it's just like, man, I wish that looked awesome. Yeah, you know. Um, but that's you know that's a simulator thing. Most most of the time, like things like War Thunder or um, you know. Uh, even World of War Tanks or uh, World of Tanks, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, looks pretty good. Um, yeah. So I think having like a, a combination of like you know the appearance and function. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. It, it seems like there's a bipolar, right? Like, like the nice looking games are more arcadey, and then the the sim or even light sims are more on you know maybe not as pretty, but they can't be pretty at times. Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think that's one of the things I really appreciate about GHPC actually is that <clears throat> is that it's like it's pretty close to like, you know, like, you know, real fire control system. It has like the the, yeah. the general aspects of it there. Yeah. Um, you know, like the meat and potatoes of it, not necessarily the um uh, you know, the salt and pepper if that makes sense. Yeah. Um but it also looks really good. So when you smoke a you know a tank, you see it rolling down. The turret's already popped off and it's burning. It's like, oh, oh yeah, crap, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, shout out to uh, <laughs> Action and the dev team of uh, Gunner Heat PC. Definitely made a really great tank game for all of us. Oh yeah. So if you were hired as an advisor for a game developer for a new tank game, what would you tell them, or what would you tell them to emphasize the most on? Uh, it would de- it would definitely depend on the on the type of game, but um, I think the main things I would want is I, I think it would it would depend on what game uh, you know what was the objective of you know like is this mm-hmm. a realistic game or a more you know like action you know like a battlefield title or something. Um, but kind of like what I touched on with um, you know what games and simulations don't do well on. I think definitely uh, emphasize. Um, the the look sound and feel um that you kind of get from from being in a tank um Mm. where it feels you know like it feels like oh yeah i'm in this like i can take a you know you know a hit or two you know like beast it has the look of oh yeah you know when when i'm shooting you shooting main gun it's just like this like (laughs) i just caused a disaster in someone else's life you know (laughs) Or, you know, in the sound of just like, you know, being, being in this, in this, you know, metal box, you know, you shoot main gun and like, you know, you kind of hear the outside noise and you hear the breach moving next to you and the loader, you know, screaming, you know, yeah, you know, up and, you know, you know, kind of like crew communication stuff. Um, the immersion. Yes, absolutely. You know, give, not give it more of an experience, uh, rather than a, uh, you know, it just being a feature. Um, I right. my kind of, I guess my way of looking at it is, if I'm going to use a tank and get blown up, I at least want the cool sound and look of it happening. You know, I want to have a couple of seconds of like, oh yeah, I'm in this, you know, in this beast, and this thing sounds awesome. Like, oh my god, RPG, and I just got blown up, but it looked really cool and sounded awesome. Mm. Um, I think having that kind of immersion makes it one more tolerable to get blown up in a video game, but it also, you know, makes it a lot more worth it to, uh, you know, to use those features in a yeah. game, you know, especially yeah. when it becomes armor. And I would say, like, just all around, you know, have that be the case. Uh, regardless of, you know, if you're on foot or whatever. I was covering a game recently called Aces in Armor, and one of their, uh, one of their things that they're doing is high fidelity on tanks. I guess if if you are advising on the immersion aspect, then... They should definitely feel the claustrophobicness, if that's a word, of yeah. a tank and, you know, being shot at um, by some, I don't know, round 
you know, and, mm-hmm. and feeling that hurt and you no know, wanting to get out. I feel like, you know, if you want that, then there needs to be some kind of even the feel of being a loader in a claustrophobic tank, right? It's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that feelingness. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And also, um, I, I think that makes it a lot more worth like, you know, like regardless, because in a lot of games like in uh, in Squad, you know, everyone wants the gun or yeah. everyone wants to be, you know, wants to be in a tank commander seat. Nobody wants to drive. I think <laughs> having each position equally have this just like, holy crap, I'm actually in this kind of feel. Mm-hmm. Like when you're driving, you know, I'm sure their, you know, their intent is to, I, I, I watched that video you, um, showing, <clears throat> showing what they're working on. Mm-hmm. Um, but having like, you know, um, that's kind of what I'm hoping for is like their intent, you know, like if you're driving, like, you know, oh man, I'm driving, but when I'm turning the tillers, I'm watching my character's hand move and the tank's reacting like it's actually happening. There is like a real mechanism there, yeah. you know, it's just, you know, um, that, you know, that, that tight visibility through a periscope, it, you know, there's smoke and like, you can hear the transmission shifting and everything right next to you. Um, I think, yeah. Like that, you know, and then and then of course you're in a you know like a Discord call with your with your buzz, you know, screaming at each other, <laughs> you know, yeah. like on top of that, I think that just makes for a really cool, well-rounded, like immersive experience. That that's a, I don't know, that's just a big thing for me is I like the immersion. I like to feel like, yep. oh man, this is probably pretty close to what it actually would have been like, especially in a historical game. Mm-hmm. That would be super cool. Like, oh man, this is probably what it looked, you know, felt and like. If I let a if I lit a you know like a candle of a certain scent, it probably would smell like it too. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think having that would be like the coolest thing. That's what I would want to emphasize on the most. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, and yeah, I, I guess that also goes back to VR too, and hopefully that technology gets better for us to really be able to touch stuff, right? And and shoot oh, yeah. or drive or even use the radio on that so Maybe one can dream cool. yeah one can oh, dream yeah. one can hope and all right that concludes part two of this interview with Bundesfels. we also want to hear your thoughts on video games and simulations the things that we discussed in this video let us know your thoughts in the comments below and do stay tuned for part three as i will be trained in the m1 abrams with Bundesfels. Make sure to check out his channel and his Twitter. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in my next video.